pick the most valuable. The state sale? You did? Okay. So it has a hundred dollar mark on it. For those of you who are trying to sell stuff, I know you need to put your labels right in front. Try not to put your label on top of the artwork, because when that adhesive comes off, you're going to take some of the artwork off too. And that's not you, that's whoever you bought it from. It's very beautiful. I think it's worth anywhere between $300 and $450. And the reason why I say that, even though you invested $100 on it, is that this particular piece would be utilized as a stand. People will use it in the foyer usually for canes and, and um, walking sticks and that kind of thing. But it's very well made. It's called Moriage. And Moriage is wet slipwear. If you put your hand all the way down through it, you can feel the texture of it. Um, the mark on the bottom is a registration mark or a maker's mark. It's the, it's, the, it's the pottery manufacturer's mark. And this particular piece has a market value, I would say, about $350 to $400 in this condition. It's in beautiful shape. Um, it dates to the Orientalist period. The Orientalist period is when Americans and Europeans are copying the Asian designs of, of course, uh, what we call the Asians, not the Orientals, but the Asians. The Orientalist period is late 1800s, early 1900s. Very nice piece. Hard Weller vase. You got to speak up for me, honey. Metallic overglaze. Um, also signed, signed here. Signature for Picard, Jacques Picard, very well known work workman for. Um, for Weller. You can see the piece is early 20th century. You can see that it is indeed very different in terms of the glazing. The work here has a particular name, um, wild or wispy blossoms here. And then you see that the opening, kind of like the opening of a mouth, right? Very, very large. Four stems that are basically going to be a centerpiece. So it's a form that is not very bulbous or round, but you can still use as a centerpiece because the opening is so big. This is a tradition you see early years of the 1900s. Value on this piece, about $500. Compared to Bob's piece, <laughs> hi Bob. So Bob, you think your piece is worth $500? I have no idea. You have no idea. How'd you acquire it? Embossed into it, it says A R S. You think that's a five? I'll put on my really good glasses and see. I'll use the glasses and the loop. <laughs> A R S. They're all numbers. No, I'll really look at it for nothing. And if you send me a photo, I'll really look at that too. <laughs> How old do you think it is? I have no idea. 1940s, 1960s, value on it about $15. No kidding. Made in America. Karen, how'd you acquire this? Uh, my sister and I found it for me. You and your sister found it in the back of a cabinet of your mother's? Yes. Okay. And you thought it was awful. Is that what you said? Yes. Here's the newspaper clipping that says, A Dutch bowl owned by Mrs. Edward Van Riper gets an approving nod from Mrs. Morris Brown and Mrs. James Carter. The 18th century bowl will accent the Virginia Colonial Room in the Indiana State Museum's Clark exhibit opening in February. So here you go with an exhibition and here you go with this piece which they are saying is indeed Dutch. So it's been Okay, so it's been in an exhibit in the museum. And how did it end up with your mother? Is your mother one of these people? No. So your mother's not one of these, I didn't hear you. I said no, so we're wondering how she got it. Oh, you're wondering how your mother got it. She stole it from the museum. If she stole it from the museum. Right. Was mom a thief? No. Okay. But she's thinking, maybe she thought, gee, it looks similar. Right? Or maybe she knew something. So she never talked about it? You gotta talk to your family. But my mother was like that. When my mother got Alzheimer's, I gotta tell you, all of a sudden, all these stories come out I never heard in my whole life. I'm like, Ma, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, da, da. and she was right. If you like, you know, it wasn't that she had Alzheimer's, it was like she just remembered those stories that she just never had a chance to tell. When she was busy telling me, don't get pregnant, go to school, study hard. 
save your money. You know, she was doing all the teaching stuff. She didn't have time. I'm telling you, it was don't get pregnant every five freaking minutes. <laughs> Be afraid of any guy anywhere. You're like, okay, ma. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> this particular piece is Dutch. This particular piece is not 18th century. This particular piece is early 19th century, and the decoration is very typical of the 18th century. So your mother might have looked at this and said, that bowl looks like my bowl, which it does, but I don't think it's the same type or age of the bowl. I know it's not. If that one's really 18th century, or if somebody writing the caption got that wrong. You see what I mean? Anything can be right, anything wrong. This is 19th century, but early 19th century. Early 1800 to about 1825, made in Holland, value on this piece. This decoration is based on the Dutch East India Company, the traders, and value on this piece about $450. The 18th century example would be worth about two grand. But let's put this back here, assume mom didn't steal it, enjoy it. <laughs> Not bad. Ceramics. One more, uh, Gary. You know, it's always funny when I reach into these things and my column comes out. <laughs> it happens. All right, so, Gary, how are you? Hey, how are you? How'd you acquire the piece of Van Briggle? I buy lots of antiques. Colorado Springs, Van Briggle. Oh, people are saying, you know, those experts online, you know, they have a YouTube channel and they go around, they think they know what they're talking about. <laughs> Oh, well, Van Briggle isn't really as valuable as it used to be. <laughs> well, that's not really true. Van Briggle has the two A mark. The double A mark is for the makers, basically in Van Briggle, the owner, the, the first potters. And then you also have Van Briggle, which says Colo, C-O-L-O, -O, Springs, Colorado. This is a beautiful and large piece of Van Briggle. Van Briggle, we saw a small one yesterday that was kind of pricey, these particular ones. People will buy them for $40 and get a real bargain. And people say, well, that's all they're worth because that's what they're selling for on eBay. And then what happens is people realize that, wow, that $40 piece really is worth $400, but they didn't sell it to the right person. Okay? This particular piece is worth much more than that. This particular piece, you bought a whole house full of furniture. So this piece you paid, how much do you think you paid? About $20 for this piece, considering all the furniture, because that was more money and all of this. This particular piece, of course, has the decoration that, it, that Van Briggle is known for. It has a glaze slip here. That's where the glaze didn't get to this area. That's important, because that can diminish value. Value on this piece, about $1,200 to $1,500 for 20 20 Thank you. Good for you. That's retail based on a sales record where a similar piece has sold. Okay? It has to have sold. If someone puts a price on it, it's just a price to wish a dream. It's not actually the sales record. And you have to make sure that you are getting the people who want it and have the pockets deep enough to pay the value. Right? A lot of people go, oh, well, I'm not paying that unless it's 300 bucks or 150 bucks when it's worth 1500. So don't sell it to those people. You know, I want to help sellers too. Don't sell it to the people who say, oh, I don't have anything, can you go down on it? Hey, think about the real value and find the sales records. I can help you do it. Thank you very much. You. All right. You're in Santa Fe, there's the square, and, they all, and a lot of the Native American, particularly the potters and the other craft people, will sit on the square in Santa Fe near La Fonda, the very famous restaurant and hotel, and they will sit there and they will sell their wares. Right. So it's the 70s, is that what you said? 1990s. I apologize. The 1990s, and... You buy that on the square, right. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Right. Okay. About fifty dollars. About fifty dollars for this black ware piece. Okay. Black ware piece marked Martinez. Mm -hmm. S Martinez, 1992. And then inside, there's all this information about. Mar Maria Martinez Which was, a relative, I was a relative. Do you know how many Native Americans named Martinez there are? A lot of them. You know how many are, are potters? A lot more. <laughs> they really are. There's a lot of them. Okay, so we believe that it looks like an S. It, oh no, it's an R. I'm sorry, it's a backwards R. R. Diane Martinez. And then we've got this, which is... Her postcard, R. Diane Martinez, New Mexico, contemporary blackware from the artist. And here's the postcard.
So you know it's not a Maria Martinez, which would make this particular poppy worth about $800 to $1,200, if it were, which it's not. But you know it's another Martinez. Right, okay. So that's what you have here. Black on black where it's carved out, right, in the areas, and it gives you this sort of gray and black and gray and black two-tone effect. You got this to help everybody who comes after you, right, with her name and sort of her postcard. And then you've got the Maria Martinez stuff here, which is just information that you got, right? So you found this at some point, okay. It's not a Maria Martinez. That's a big deal. It's like, is it a Picasso? Does it just look like a Picasso? And this doesn't look like a Maria Martinez either. This artist is a potter, but she's no Maria Martinez, okay? Value on this piece that you got for about 50 bucks? 150 bucks. Not bad, but, you know. <laughs> and knowing who the artist is is important, so it's a good thing that you got the little piece. So that's one piece of Native American wares. That's not really indicative of what we see with Native American pottery because Native American blackware is not usually shiny like this. Native American blackware usually has a shine, but it's not really glossy like this. Kind of like really made up, you know? <laughs> you know, the difference between when you go to a makeup artist and they make up your face, I don't know, at the, at the department store, or you're trying to do it in the car on your way to work. <laughs> That's the difference. Really, really shiny versus not so shiny. And then there's this piece of ceramics. This is made in Germany. Melinda, how did you acquire the German perfume bottle that is ceramic? A sister or somebody of that guy? Yeah, okay. Well, it's German made. It's made for the German market. People do collect, in fact, um, perfume bottles. This once had a, pole, a little pole on it, so you can basically do this get the perfume and then go da, 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 behind your knees, wherever the heck you put perfume, <laughs> right? So what you have here is you have the residue or the remainder of the cork. You don't have the actual pole, the small little piece. And you'd have to do this and then she sits as a figurine on your dressing table. Okay. Early years of the 20th century, made in Germany, value on the piece, about $70. Many people collect perfume bottles, everything from the figural type to those that are flowers, lalique, they're glass, they're all different types, they're metal. People like perfume. And people today are actually even selling perfumes that are vintage. A little half-used bottle of vintage perfumes are selling as vials. They only sell a little bit, so you can smell like Aunt Helen used to smell kind of thing from the 50s, 60s, 70s. I'm not kidding you old perfume bottles. So people are saying, well, it's not, it's for the bottle. I'm buying it for the bottle. People are buying it not only for the bottle, but they're also buying it for the perfume that's left over in the bottle and then just selling that little bitty, itty, itty bitty types. It's a big business, perfume. And the remixing is big too. Places in New York run by young girls who are basically saying, come in and mix your favorite tones. You can mix this old perfume with that old perfume. I don't know. I want new perfume. <laughs> new bottle, new thing. I don't know. But it's cool and it's very popular. Gina. Thank you. So don't just throw away the old perfumes. And if you're a seller, make sure you're marketing that properly. How did you acquire this piece? Wow, that's a beautiful piece. That's nice and heavy. It's a handleless tea cup. And why is it handleless? Because it's not for tea. Gina. Right here. Hi, baby. Oh, baby. How are you doing? I'm fine. Okay, what have you got? Not for tea. Oh, well. I'm on a new diet, Gina. Did you hear this? New diets. We're starting a whole new decade with the weight loss. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Sounds good, right? Are you excited? I'm excited about this. I'm excited. Bouillon. Yay. Drink some soup, <laughs> right? Have more liquids, they're telling me now. What's the cup? I just went through the whole diet thing, Gina. What is it for? Bouillon. It's bouillon. It's a bouillon cup, no handles. A tea? You gotta be able to have hold on and still put out your pinky. That's a teacup, yeah. right? No handles is bouillon. Some kind of, you know, broth. Okay? What have we got here? How'd you acquire it? It was a great, great grandmother's. She was born in 1816. I know that was when she was born. She lived until she was about 80 and it was hers. 
It's transfer wear, so the ceramic actually is, the image of, on the ceramic is transferred on. It is a print, you can actually even see some of the dots of the print. So the print is applied onto the piece of ceramic, right, all the way around, same thing on the inside. There is a chip here, there is some damage on the inside, probably from all that broth, <laughs> right? And then there's no mark on the bottom. You'll notice again the damage here on the bottom, which is where dirt and moisture condensation get under the glaze. That's why you have the very, very dark brown at the bottom. Might have been sitting in something wet or watery. There's usually a cup underneath it. Uh, I'm sorry, a plate. There's usually a plate underneath it. There's what? something on the bottom that looks like a number or maybe letter? There are two dots on the bottom. Yeah, two dots do not a letter or number make. <laughs> Piece is English, and it dates any time between 1825 and 1845. Value on it in that condition, about $95 for that one bouillon cup in condition that I would consider fair. Yeah. Okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. <laughs>